Hello and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody and in today's video we are going to be making these super duper cute little birdies or as the people in my discord are calling them burbs. <laughs> um, I think they're super adorable and I decided to use all kinds of pastel colors. I was actually sent yarn which I'm going to be doing a full-on review on later by uh, Pipero Craft Company. They sent me a big old sampler pack of a bunch of their yarn and I actually have fallen in love with it. It's really nice yarn. It is uh, actually a five ply three size weight when I usually use worsted weight but honestly I say this is pretty on par with the worsted weight that I typically use so I would go with either a three or a four size weight for this yarn but generally I really like this yarn we're going to be using this pretty teal color for the mace body and for the wings as well as this yellow color for the little beak and I have all kinds of yarn colors for that I love them all we're also for this project going to be using some safety eyes I actually don't know if these are nines or twelves because I can never tell the difference but the larger the eye that you use the more kind of cute effect you'll get with it you can only i mean it will eventually stop and it'll be a little too ridiculous at some point but generally the larger the eye the cuter the effect this is my big brother big sister emma groomy well we're gonna be working on that next week actually but generally you're gonna want something between a 9 and a 12 you probably could also do a 15 it all depends on how massive you would like your eyes and i'm going to be using a darning needle some little scissors as well and also I'm going to be using my D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook this is my furls I am an affiliate with them but I have fallen in love with these hooks long before I became an affiliate all links for everything down below I have, a lot of them are affiliate links I'm, I'm pretty sure I label them but generally uh it won't cost you any more than what you would usually pay for these things in fact I believe with the furls you get a discount code so it just helps the channel out if you do click on any of the links down below and I do appreciate it so for today's video we're going to be showing you how I do my main body how to make the little wings and how to do the nose I'm going to assemble it all together and here is our little bird also there is a printable pdf for this cute little pattern it'll be free for the first week and I believe after that it'll turn to three dollars everything will be linked down below there will also be a screenshotable version of this pattern if you would like to do that as well however you want to do it but let's go ahead and get started with our little birdie I forgot to mention it, but you also need some polyfill. A pound bag is gonna be more than enough for what you will need. You'll be able to make a whole little army of these little burbs. So uh, for this, you're going to want to be comfortable with basically working in the round. You can, as a beginner, do this project. You're just gonna to wanna to be comfortable with doing a couple of these things. I'll show you how I do them, but I do have a crochet 101 playlist in case I'm going too quickly for you. Uh, basically, you're going to want to know how to work on the round, how to do some increasing. I'll show you how I actually do an invisible increase and also how I stagger versus stack my increases as well. And you'll also need to know how to do some decreasing and generally how to sew your amigurumi fairly well. I'll show you how I do all of those things on my ways of doing them, but generally you're going to want to be comfortable with it if you're uh, watching this tutorial. So we're going to create a slip knot and add it to our crochet hook right here. The way that I do my magic ring is a little bit differently. Uh, I can't do a normal magic ring to save my life, so I just do the chain two method. I then skip my second chain and I go back into my first chain in the center. And I'm going to place six single crochet on the inside of that. So I'm gonna go back inside that first chain again, two. You'll also notice that I am yarn under with my crochet that's okay you can yarn under or yarn over it will work just the same I just do the X method of single crochet versus the Y method which is uh, when you make your stitches look like an X instead of a Y basically typically if you go like this you do the Y method which makes your stitches look like a Y if you go uh, under it will do the X for you and I like that because it makes your uh, stuffing show a little less through your amigurumi so one two three four let's go back in under and go through that go back under through that and yeah my hole is huge here but if i pull on the tail very lightly it will bring it all together and it'll close that hole so now that was row one we are going to go on to row two now 
and for row two, we are going to increase every single one of these stitches. And in order to do that, you can just do the normal method of increasing where you just put two stitches inside of one stitch. Uh, for my amigurumi, I like to go through the front loop only for most of my stitches, just because I think that it also makes things look a little bit more bubbly and it looks a little bit better in my opinion. However, I had a commenter actually tell me on a way to make your stitches, your increasing, look a little less obvious. So what I like to do is I'll single crochet the first stitch of my increase, and then I go back inside the same stitch, but instead of going through the front loop only, I go through both loops. That brings that back loop up a little bit and kind of closes that gap. So these are all in the very first stitch and it makes it so that your stitches look a little less uh, holy basically. You don't have as large of a hole showing so it looks a bit more invisible. So right. I'll show that again. We're going to go through the first front loop of our second stitch now. Do a normal single crochet then you're going to go back inside that same stitch but this time go through both loops and pull that through. It looks much more invisible, trust me. Third stitch, go through the front loop. Third stitch, both loops together. Fourth stitch, front loop. Fourth stitch, both loops. And this will increase. We're going to be going from six stitches up to 12. Let me pull my yarn a little bit. There we go. Front loop on the fifth stitch both loops on the fifth stitch and now we're on our last and sixth stitch I think I just yeah I split my yarn on accident sixth stitch there we go for front loop and now we're gonna go through both loops that is the end of row two and now we're on to row three it's pretty quick this amigurumi he's really really small and cute and tiny and I love him so we should have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12 stitches. We went from 6 stitches up to 12. We're going to go from 12 up to 18 on row 3. We're basically adding 6 stitches every single round until we reach 24 stitches basically. So we're doing one shy of what we would usually do for our whale amigurumi. He's a little bit smaller. So the way that we do that is now we have an extra space between our increases. So we're just going to go through the first loop and single crochet one and then on the second loop we're going to increase. So that's our second loop. Go in again and increase that seam stitch. Single crochet one. We're going to do that all the way around and then single crochet and increase that second stitch. Single crochet one. The second stitch and increase. That's our third repetition, I believe. I hope one and increase stitch go through both one and increase i think we have one more to do yeah you can tell right there at least i can <laughs> you can tell when you've increased and i try to go over my increases so and increase so now, yeah, that's the last one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have 18 stitches and we want to get up to 24. What you could do is just evenly uh, spread it out, single crochet two, increase, single crochet two, increase. However, I want this to look a little bit more round and I do a method of something called staggering my increases versus stacking my increases and when i stagger my increases essentially i am offsetting my increases so that they are not stacked up on top of each other and the way that i do that is instead of single crochet two and increase and having my increase line up with my old one i'm going to split that single crochet two in half so i'm going to single crochet one and increase the second stitch and then single crochet one. Oh, I split my yarn. Let's fix that. And single crochet one. There we go. So let's do that again. Single crochet one and increase. Going through both loops and single crochet one. That way, as you can tell here, there are still two stitches between our increases here and here. 
I actually forgot to put my tail as my marker. So I'm going to do that real quick right there. That's where my row began right there. Single crochet one increase. Actually, it started over there. No, it started right there. Single crochet one increase, single crochet one, single crochet one increase, single crochet one. There we go. And now we're going to do that until the end of this row, essentially. So we're going to do again, single crochet one increase. Single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, going through both, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, and finally single crochet one, increase and single crochet one I pulled it right there that's not fun he'll be fine he'll hang up behind so I'm gonna move my tail forward and what I like to do here is we're going to actually just single crochet around for those 24 stitches for six rounds so one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna go around and around and around maintaining those 24 stitches to just kind of build the body. So that is 144 stitches and we're just going to go around and around and around for six rounds maintaining our 24 stitches on every single one of those rounds. Uh, I'll be back as soon as I finish those six rounds there and I'll show you how I add the eyes before I do my decreasing along the bottom and then after that we'll do the wings and then after that we'll do the little nose and I'll be right back as soon as I get all of those rounds done. All right so now I have finished rows five through ten so so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's six rounds around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place the eyes. And what I like to do to place the eyes is I kind of have it squished facing forward, having it just kind of facing that way. And I'm going to take my little safety bobbles. I like to place them first before I put in my backing on both of them. So what I like to do is I like to place my eyes between rows six and seven. So this is 10, nine, eight, seven, and I'm going to put it right there between. For the first one, it doesn't super duper matter as long as it's between rows six and seven because it's going to be kind of rounded that way. Here, I'm then going to take my other one and I'm going to try to get it so that it is between rows six and seven. So again, right around here, but I want to have about four stitches of space between. I might have to try again and do it again, but one, two, three, four. That's a good space of the eyes. So now that I've done that, I'm going to kind of flip it inside out. We're going to try to snap these on. These ones are a bit formidable and are hard to snap their backs onto. That'll do. <laughs> There we go for one, <laughs> and these ones are so hard. And two, actually that one was easier. I feel like actually there we go. I felt like that one hadn't snapped. These work really well. I got those from Hobby Lobby, but you can also get them a wish and Amazon and all that stuff. Uh, four stitches between them. Now we're gonna go onto row eleven and we're going to start our decreasing. And the way that we do our decreasing is actually the exact inverse of how we increased easiest way that I can actually think of phrasing that. So I'm going to, the last time we increased, we single crochet one, increase single crochet one. So now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to single crochet one. We're decreasing six stitches this round as well. And we're going to decrease six stitches every single uh, row until we are down to six stitches. We're going to then decrease the next row. So single crochet one, and decrease. And the way that I decrease is I'm going to actually take my hook and go through my first loop and then go through my second loop. So these two stitches are being single crocheted together essentially and I go through front loop only as usual. And then I just single crochet those two together and then I single crochet one again. I'll show that another time. So one single crochet, decrease by putting those two stitches together. We have the two loops and then single crochet them together and single crochet one single crochet one decrease these two together single crochet one single crochet one decrease these two together single crochet one 
And I believe we have two more repetitions. So single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one. And then we have one more repetition for this row 11. So single crochet one, decrease, and single crochet one. So now if you are wanting to, you can stuff a little bit. However, I want to single crochet one more round and then I will do my stuffing. So for row 12, we're going to single crochet one and decrease the entire way around. We're going down from 18 stitches down to 12. And that's how we do that. We're not staggering. We're just trying to get these down as quickly as we can, basically. So single crochet one, and we're making kind of an egg shape. They're pretty cute. They're kind of like little egg birds. Single crochet one, decrease. And if the hole becomes too small for you to feel like you can still stuff in it, you can take a break and stuff. Obviously, however you want to do it, this is your bird. So don't feel like you can't take a break, you can't pause, you can't do something. Just just take your time. That's what I always do. I pause YouTubers all the time. Single crochet one, decrease two together, and I think I have one more decrease. Single crochet one, and decrease. So now I'm probably gonna pop off camera and I'm gonna go stuff as much as I can. I'm gonna pull that a little bit and the way that I stuff initially, I've got a big old pile of fluff here. I try not to keep it on the desk because then I have to like wipe the desk off constantly. I try to pull off little pieces. And my first thing that I do whenever I stuff is I make it so that my loop is big so that I don't lose my loop and I don't undo it. And then I always try to push in a good amount of stuffing and what I do is I cup it towards the eyes first. That way the backings are kind of covered and it helps push it out a little bit more and it doesn't squish them the wrong way. So that's what I do for that. I'm gonna pop off camera and I'm gonna finish stuffing this and then I'll show you how I do my final decrease round where we basically just decrease until we get down to six. We have 12 stitches now and for our final decrease round, we're going to decrease every single one of those stitches and I'll be right back as soon as I get this stuffed. All right, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. And now what we're gonna do for our final round is we're going to decrease every single stitch. So every single one, we're gonna go from 12, if I can stay on screen, there we go. We're gonna go from 12 down to six. So don't worry, it'll seem a little weird, but I'll show you how I close off my amigurumi so that it is seamless when it comes to the final six stitches. So we're just gonna go around and kick all those stitches all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have one more. That was pretty quick. And there's just stuffing everywhere. All right, so we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna give a nice little chop. And I'm going to pull that all the way through that loop. And now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna cut that tail because I don't want it anymore. And we're gonna get our darning needle out. And with our darning needle, if I can pick it up, come on, there we go. We are going to put that onto our darning needle. And what I like to do with my stitches is I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm gonna go from the front towards the center of my stitch for every single one of these stitches. Second stitch. I think I may have just gone through that twice. Every single stitch going from the outside, get that polyfill off, to the inside. And this is our final stitch. And what I like to do after that is I'm gonna take my darning needle and before I close this shut, we're gonna feed it through the center and up to the side. And that way, when I pull on it, it pulls all those stitches together and you get this really pretty little star almost. Then I always like to take my darning needle and I like to go through the side again, but through like another angle. That way it's just kind of off on its own side. So now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work on our wings and those are super duper easy. I'm gonna show you how I make those. So now we have our base and what we need to do is start adding on our little wings and our beak essentially. So I already have one of the wings made. You're going to want to make two and this is super duper easy. I just like to make it a specific way. So for this wing, you're going to start out the exact same as before. Actually, I'm gonna move this out of the way so it's a little less complicated. There we go. Keep our darning needle nearby. 
and I'm going to create a slip knot just like I did and we're gonna repeat the first two rows of our little guy right here. We're going to make a ring, but there is something a little bit different that I do with my tail, so stay tuned for that, basically. All right, we're going to create a ring. So I'm going to do my chain two, one, two, like so. I'm gonna go inside my first ring and we're again gonna put six single crochet on the inside. So one, two, three. Oh, I split three, there we go. Four, five, and six. Now, here's where we do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna pull my tail, just like so. Pull my yarn out a little bit so I have something to work with. And, I'm gonna angle this actually a little bit better. What I like to do is I like to work my tail as if it is a piece of my work, at least for the wing, so that it won't come undone because it is gonna be something that you see the back of and you see the front of. So how I do that, we're gonna take our crochet hook and we're gonna go through the front loop we're going to do the same increasing that we did on the other side, but I'm going to take my tail and bring it forward, going through the front so that I am basically crocheting it into that stitch. I'm treating it as if it is a piece of that stitch. So I'm going to then go through that and keep it towards the front and single crochet it inside of my work. You don't have to do this, but I find that it looks tidiest this way. So now I'm going to go into my second stitch keeping that tail as if it is a piece of the stitch. And I'm gonna single crochet that, go back inside, and I'm gonna do that for all six stitches, for all six increases. We're in our third, keeping it in the front. And increase, I'm probably gonna fast forward just a little bit. All right, so now we're at 12, and what I like to do here is I'm gonna kick my tail, kind of tug it a little bit, it kind of pulls things and pulls the stitches a little bit tighter, and then I'm gonna let that drop in the back. I'm gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of what would be round three, or just the top of the stitch for your first stitch. Basically, can I stay stitch enough? It's a tongue twister. I'm gonna cut my tail and then pull that nice and through, and then I like to also pull that through the stitch to kind of make it a little bit more even. And I think that that looks really nice. I'm then going to take this tail and because I worked it through all those stitches, it's not going to come undone. It's going to be nice and stuck there. So I'm going to cut that off and that is how I make my wings. I actually am going to take my darning needle with my whichever one I want. I'm going to take it this one. And then I'm gonna actually sew across three stitches along the side. So say here, I like to do it along the seventh row. I wanna say that's six to seven there, basically. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go up like that and kind of tug on it. And then I'm gonna go through from the back to the front of our stitch like so. And then I'm gonna go across again. I try to keep it so that my wing and my eye are about a stitch apart. I try to evenly space it so that I know where it is. Oops, bounced my camera for good luck. There we go. And I've got to do one more just to make it nice and even. And then what I like to do, actually I'm going to do another one because it doesn't seem like it's enough. There we go, like so. We're going to go down, go up here, pick up going from underneath to above, then going down the center, and go up above, from bottom and up, and then going down the side. And here, I like to go through this part of the stitch and go through the center of the body. So I kind of just stitch it on, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other wing. I'm then going to come back and I'll show you how we do our little beak. All right, so now we only have one more piece of our bird that we need to get done left, and that is our little beak. I find that this is one of the easier things to do in this pattern, but let me know what you think down below. I am going to again make a magic ring. I'm going to do my chain two once more, and we're going to put 
four single crochet on the inside of that ring. It's a little bit different than before because I want to make it look a little bit more of a triangular shape. I'm going to add less stitches to begin and it makes it look a little bit more pinched on top. So three and four. We're going to pull this tight and you can work your tail through a couple stitches. That's what I'm going to do just to make it so that it is a bit more uh, structurally in there. We're going to pull our tail towards the front just like before and I'm going to single crochet one and then I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to increase. We're going to do that once more and get ourselves up to six single crochet. I'm going to go through both loops for my increase as well. Now what you might find is it wants to go in on itself so you have to kind of correct it. I'm going to keep my tail to the back now and I'm going to try to push it so that the outside, my right side facing, is facing out. I'm going to have to kind of pinch it and push it and there we are almost there. <laughs> kind of got to wiggle it to get those stitches. It's kind of a pain in the butt. If you pull your tail it can also help a little bit too. So now we're going to go into our next stitch and single crochet and then in our last one we're going to single crochet and increase so one and two and now i'm just going to slip stitch that off and sew it to the center of my face i'm gonna cut that pull that tail this yarn might have a little bit of an issue. There we go. It likes to try to untangle from itself once it cuts, which, you know, it's neither here nor there. And that created a cute little beak. I'm also going to cut my tail since it is already included in some of my stitches. I'm going to cut it nice and short and kind of let it go on the inside of my work. And now what I like to do is I'm going to take my darn needle and I'm going to sew it centered but on the row right below the eyes so right around row seven to eight we're going to take this and kind of just go into the center try to square it off as much as we can and go through the stitch like that i like to try to tug on my yarn as i uh sing as i basically pull each stitch through and i find that that makes it so that it's a bit more hidden I'm going to finish sewing this on, and then your bird is pretty much done. And once you have added your beak, you're all done. I love how this little bird turned out. I have noticed that his little wings want to stay outward or even just go up. He really wants to fly or just look like he's raising his little wings up to the sky. I feel like if I actually just stuck him somewhere and had his wings kind of being pushed down, that they'd look a little bit more like they're going towards his sides. So you can try that out if you'd like. I also am interested to see how this pattern would look with a uh, velvet plush version of this. I might post it to my Instagram. Instagram if I make one I think it would be super duper cute all you would do is basically just whatever velvet yarn you're using I'd go down a size or two whatever the uh, yarn specifically calls for for a hook and then I would just go off of that the smaller the hook the less your holes are going to show but again you don't want it to be so tight that your stitches look warped and go in on themselves so you've got to find that happy little medium when it comes to your tensioning and your gauge all right, so I'm happy with how this looked. I hope everybody uh, has a wonderful April coming up, which is why I'm making these little birds. And spring is coming. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. I would like to go outside and just hang out and not be in sub-zero temperatures like I am in Maine right now. For some reason, it is stupid cold. I don't know why. But yeah, I would like to say thank you for watching my video. And before we go, I would like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to grow as a channel quite as much as we did so thank you for your generous pledges if you're interested in supporting our channel go to patreon.com slash knit i don't know how i landed that channel name and you can see the different rewards that we offer our patrons there free patterns early access to tutorials and more thanks again for watching and be sure to like subscribe and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this i'm going to be working on the whale big brother big sister next all right until next time guys Bye. I made him real quick. <laughs>
Also, size for reference, like holy moly, they double in size when you do plushy yarn. 